All right, welcome back. This is our second time series video. This one should be a little bit shorter. We're really just gonna be covering one particular uh, regression type that you may or may not be seeing in your, say, macro classes uh, called ARIMA. Uh, ARIMA is a type of time series regression that allows for both autoregressive processes, that's the AR part, uh, and the MA, uh, moving average processes, that's the MA part, uh, and of course everything uh, integrated. So we have some, uh, some autoregressive terms, we have some moving average terms, we have, we allow for everything to be integrated. Okay. So uh, from last time, we already loaded in the AER package, which has the China income data in it. And we pulled the industry uh, time series variable out of the China income. Let's go ahead and just plot it so we remember what it looks like. There we go. Uh, so that's our time series of Chinese income data. So we're going to want to run an ARIMA on it. ARIMA is just a base R function. You don't need any special packages to do it. So we're going to run an ARIMA. We're going to store our regression result as ARIMA model, all right? And that's going to be an ARIMA function. Uh, and uh, we're going to be using the industry uh, time series variable. And then we want to tell it basically how many autoregressive and moving average terms we want in our model. Basically, what's the order of the model? If you ever heard of, for example, a 1-1 a uh, ARMA process, that would be a 1-0-1 one, one, uh, ARIMA process. Uh, so in this case, let's go ahead and do 1-1-1. One, one, one. Uh, just because if you don't know what that means, you're probably not doing ARIMA, so you don't need to worry about it. So order, and we're going to put in a vector here for the three terms that an ARIMA model takes. Let's go ahead and do one, one, one. And let's run our model. So now we have an ARIMA model. Uh, let's look at the results of our ARIMA model. I'm going to go ahead and use summary here as opposed to uh, Stargazer. Uh, Stargazer also will display the results of ARIMA models, although I've found that sometimes you get errors with trying to use Stargazer with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and use summary. Uh, and we can see here it's got lots of information about the error measures. Uh, it's got the AR1 coefficient here, the MA1 coefficient, as well as their standard errors, which is the kind of stuff that we want. All right, so we have our ARIMA model. What can we do with it? Well, one thing you would commonly do with an ARIMA model is forecast the future. Let's predict the future. So we're going to do that with the forecast package. All right, so we're going to load in the forecast package. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and forecast five periods into the future. Why five? because I feel like five. So with that simple enough, we just do the forecast function. Uh, we're just gonna plug in our ARIMA model that we already estimated, and we're gonna say, hey, predict five periods into the future, please. We're gonna run that. It's gonna show us a table of data. We have the point forecast. That's the most specific prediction that we can get. We're predicting that in 1989, Chinese income will be 1,511.524. We don't just have our estimate, we also have some uncertainty in our estimate, right? We don't know exactly what the future is going to be. We just have some idea. So we've got the 80% confidence interval and the 95% confidence interval as well. Okay, so uh, now that we have our forecast, let's go ahead and produce a nice plot of our forecast. Uh, and simply enough, thankfully, the forecast function gives us a, for a forecast object, which slots directly into our plot command. So if we plot out the forecast, uh, it will give us a nice time series plot, where first of all, it includes the actual time series data that we already have. And then in blue over here on the right, it's got a nice solid line for the point prediction, the point forecast. And then it's got in uh, in shades, the 80% uh, the confidence interval and the 95% confidence interval as well, showing that we don't know exactly what's going to happen. You'll see that the confidence intervals get larger as we go further into the future, because the further out in the future we're trying to predict, the less certain we are of our prediction. All right. That was a short one, but it was really just going over that one command and how to use forecast with it. Uh, so that's it. All right. Uh, see you next time in the next video. Thank you.